history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from the spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Midday. Right now at midday, the owner of a Crosby plant on defense in court accused of releasing air pollution during Hurricane Harvey. We're inside the courtroom right now as that criminal trial gets underway. A live report in just minutes. And a live look at the Southwest Freeway this afternoon. Cloudy and sticky, meteorologist Britta Merwin has a look at the week's forecast. We are following some breaking news right now in the Stafford area. That's where a shelter in place has been issued after a gas leak. Now, this is in the area of Stafford Pride and Constitution Avenue. A hazmat team is on the scene again right now. There is a voluntary evacuation in place, but no one will be allowed in that area or to re-enter the area. We do have a crew headed to the scene now and we'll bring you the very latest both on air and online. All right, turning our attention to the forecast on this gloomy Monday. It is gloomy. And Britta, once you step outside, it's really humid. <laughs> I know, it's air you can wear, right? Yes. Uh, so let's take you outside right now. This is a live look from our tower camera. We can finally see the Southwest Freeway, very different from this morning when we were socked in with very thick fog here on the Southwest side. Visibility across the area has been improving. We're up to about a mile here in town, a half mile in Conroe, but we still have very thick fog closer to the coast. Uh, this is a live look into Galveston. That's that sea fog extremely thick, so kind of hard to make out seawall. And they still have a dense fog advisory in effect for the coast until noon. So we won't see improvements with that until we get into the afternoon. And still, I would expect some reduced visibility at the coast. We'll just have a little easier of a time getting around once we get past lunchtime. Meanwhile, here in Houston, we're expecting temperatures to be in the upper 70s today. It's pretty warm out right now. We'll top off at 78 degrees. Notice that we do have a slight chance of a passing shower. It's limited, but we do have a 20% chance of a stray shower coming up later today. We'll take a look at the rest of your work week in just a few minutes because we do have more rain on the way to Naya. And don't get too comfortable to the warm temperatures. Reality of winter right around the corner. Over to you. Coming back. Thank you, Britta. Remember, you can track the forecast anytime you would like. All you have to do is download Frank's free forecast weather app. Just search KPRC in your Apple or Android app store. The criminal trial against chemical plant Arkema and three of its employees at fires, over fires, the company's Crosby plant will begin this week. That's right. The company is accused of air pollution during Hurricane Harvey. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli joins us now live. So, Vincent, today both sides worked out the finishing touches for that trial. Tanaya, good morning. Today, the defense and prosecution are wrapping up pretrial motions. Tomorrow, jury selection begins, and on Wednesday, opening arguments are expected to start. 
During the chaos of Hurricane Harvey, the Arkema plant in Crosby caught fire. Dozens of deputies and firefighters were there for days, helping people, keeping the situation under control while dangerous chemicals burned. Two deputies had to go to the hospital. In August 2018, Arkema CEO Richard Rowe and a plant manager were indicted for recklessly releasing toxic chemicals into the air during Hurricane Harvey. The DA's office says Rowe lied about how dangerous the situation was. The toxic cloud put the Crosby community and first responders at risk, according to the DA's office. The vice president of logistics, Mike Keough, was charged with felony assault. The DA says his actions put the community in harm's way. Now, nearly three years later, the trio will head to trial. And if convicted, the plant manager and CEO could face up to five years behind bars and the company would be fined $1 million. Reporting live from the Harris County Courthouse, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Vincent. There's now being help offered to people who were affected by that explosion at Watson Grinding and Manufacturing Facility. This all happened back on January 24th, early in the morning in Northwest Houston. Two people died, dozens of homes were damaged or destroyed. Governor Abbott signed a disaster declaration that will allow for low interest federal disaster loans for businesses and residents. It's available for people in Harris, Fort Bend, Montgomery and other counties. On Wednesday, disaster recovery specialists will help answer questions and explain the application process. That workshop opens at 10 a.m. at the Brenda John Duncan YMCA. A fire now out after a gas pipeline rupture Corpus Christi. This is in the area of Interstate 37 and Buddy Lawrence. The gas has since been cut off. There are several power outages in that area right now. A shelter in place for surrounding schools has been lifted. We're told that fire was not a part of the Sitco plant. So far, we don't know whether anyone was hurt. On this President's Day, a new exhibit opening honoring the 41st President of the United States, George H.W. Bush. It's at the National Museum of Funeral History here in Houston. That exhibit focuses on the lives of the late President and his wife, Barbara, as well as their funeral services and the famous 4141 funeral train. SpaceX is furthering its mission in the future of space. It successfully launched 60 Starlink satellites from its Falcon 9 rocket. The blastoff happening just after 9 this morning from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. This marks the fifth launch of a group of satellites. SpaceX tried to land its booster on the launch pad, but it apparently missed its target landing in the ocean. Some scary moments outside of a tow yard in Oregon when a driver busts through a gate, knocking down an employee. Coming up, we hear from that employee for the very first time since the incident. What he's saying this morning. My Carpet Giant. It's been a long month so far for the Houston Astros and the sign-stealing scandal, and there's still a whole season left to play. Today, the team helping, holding rather, their first full spring training workout in Florida. Channel 2 Sports Director Randy McAvoy in West Palm Beach, live now with the latest. Hey, Randy. Hey, how are you, Sion? Uh, yeah, this is the first full squad day, so the Astros really happy to be turning the corner, putting everything behind them. Uh, they're out on the field right now. As a matter of fact, behind me, they're doing some infield work. Carlos Correa, Jose Altuve, and company. Uh, first full squad work. I got started a little bit late today, typical of a first day, but they're happy to be out here, happy to be focusing on a new baseball season uh, because in about six weeks, this season will start. So the Astros, as you roll some of the video, Astros hit the field this morning, joining the pitchers and catchers who had opened camp for the first several days uh, they began last Thursday and when the full squad gets together it's kind of a new vibe a new feeling out here uh, and then in about five days they'll play the first exhibition game it'll be Saturday uh, right here at the complex against the Washington Nationals now Dusty Baker meets every day with the media he spoke about an hour or so ago talking about the team unity the bonding that takes place starting with day one here's what Baker had to say you know once they get on the field Baseball is baseball, and uh, these guys have been playing baseball all their lives, and these guys are, have won, uh, the, you know, the last four out of five years or whatever it is. And so, uh, you know, I think that, you know, the players know the formula on how to, you know, how to get there, and they just need me to help, you know, direct them, you know, and navigate them through this, uh, you know, course that we're about to take. 
Yeah, I'll tell you what, Dusty Baker has that calm demeanor out here. The players respect him. He's getting to know some of these players as well because, you know, he just got hired a few weeks ago. Some of these players meeting him and getting a chance to talk with him for the first time here early in spring training. All right, we're going to check in with you again coming up at 12 noon. We'll hear from a couple of players, Carlos Correa, also Alex Bregman speaking today as well about turning that page and getting going here with the first full squad workout and coverage uh, later in the day as well and online. Click to Houston.com. We're live in West Palm Beach with the Astros. Randy McAvoy, KPRC Channel 2 Sports. Thank you, Randy. Now to an update caught on camera to a story that we first told you about over the weekend. You see it here. A tow yard employee in Oregon's now speaking out after he was hurt when two people stole a pickup right in the middle of the night. They slammed into that employee. You can see it here in one second. Sent him flying through the air. Josh Durrett says this happened just seconds after he went to unlock that gate. He says after he was hit, adrenaline was pumping through his veins and he jumped up and went after the person inside of that truck. I was trying to hopefully get that window open and pull him out, but yeah, that didn't work. I got some bruising, uh, uh, bruised ribs, uh, chest plate is pretty bruised up too. Uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be alive, to be honest. Police later caught and arrested one of those two suspects. The company says the truck had just been towed a few hours before. It would have cost $339 to have it released. It is the second day of searching for a woman who was swept away in the Tennessee River. Rescue squads from several areas searching the river to try to recover her body. Officials say the woman came to the marina to visit a friend. Authorities say that woman tried to walk out to her friend's boat, not realizing how deep the water was and was swept away. About 50 people and canine teams have searched for the woman over the last few days. Now to a bizarre accident in the iconic ski resort town of Vail. Authorities are now trying to figure out how a skier died in a tragic mishap that happened on a chairlift. Here's NBC's Joe Fryer. This morning, visitors at Vail, Colorado's scenic ski resort are on alert after officials say a New Jersey man was asphyxiated while trying to load a chairlift. The coroner tells Vail Daily 46-year-old Jason Varnish slipped through a gap in his seat on Thursday and was left hanging from the chair after becoming entangled in his coat. The coroner says the coat ended up going around his head and neck area, putting his neck in a position that compromised his airway. The Mountain Ski Patrol performed emergency CPR on the mountain before transporting Varnish to a nearby hospital where he later died. Resort officials tell NBC News they are conducting a full investigation, adding the lift has been thoroughly inspected and is operating normally. It's awful. Um, still not sure exactly how it happened, but it's a tragedy. This is not the first time a passenger became suspended on a chairlift at the resort. In 2009, a 48-year-old man was left suspended upside down on the same lift for seven minutes before being rescued without injury. That is insane. Last year, an 8-year-old boy was seen hanging from a chairlift at Grouse Mountain Ski Resort in Vancouver. Incredibly, a group of quick-thinking young teens created a makeshift crash pad to catch the boy. Wow, they're heroes. Also this weekend on another mountain near Vail, an avalanche killed two Colorado men snowmobiling in the backcountry. Late Sunday, rescue crews and volunteers recovered the bodies of the men who were buried under snow and ice. Hiked into where they were and just started searching with our beacons, probing, going everywhere. Officials are still investigating but say the avalanche may have been triggered by the group's snowmobiles. More and more people are coming up and they're enjoying the backcountry, but there's a lot of risk associated with that. And that was NBC's Joe Fryer reporting. The search continues today for a mountain lion that attacked a young girl Sunday in a California nature preserve. Witnesses say that cat weighed about 100 pounds and bit the girl in the ankle. An adult was able to fight off the animal. The Department of Fish and Wildlife now searching for the animal. Hundreds of rolls of toilet paper stolen from a delivery man outside of a supermarket in Hong Kong early today. Police arresting two suspects in the robbery and they're looking for a third. The stolen toilet paper found in a nearby hostel. The coronavirus outbreak causing panic across Hong Kong, creating long waiting lines for essential goods like toilet paper. The Daytona 500 was a wash, and that was all thanks to Mother Nature. That rainout means the 62nd annual race is going to be held today. Now the race, they called the race after just 20 official laps yesterday. 18 NASCAR Air Titans along with 12 jet dryers, two vacuums, and one sweeper rapidly deployed to the track 
for the drying efforts. This is only the second postponement in the 62 year history of the greatest American race. And we know you have Florida roots. Yes. I worked in Florida and Orlando for seven years. There was always Always rain. Always on the raining. 500. <laughs> yep. You can count on it, even in February. Yeah. I mean, you know what you can count on, right? It's mm -hmm. kind of like clockwork. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, fog, pretty popular this time of year here in town, and that's what we woke up to this morning. Uh, it's still an issue directly at the coast, but we're seeing good improvements here in Houston, and we're ready for a pleasant afternoon. Not going to see a lot of sunshine, but at least it'll be warm. If you're not a fan of humidity, uh, that's going to be an issue because <laughs> it's up there, that's for sure. Uh, this is a live look at our tower camera. Uh, temperature's right now 73 degrees. So it's warm out there. Uh, we have overcast skies here in town. We might see a break of sunshine as we go into the afternoon. Uh, meanwhile, the coast is still socked in with the sea fog. This is a live look at seawall. Uh, definitely expect the fog to still be an issue. As we go into the afternoon past the dense fog advisory, I still expect that we'll have some lower visibility directly at the coast. You're at a quarter mile right now. Here in town, a nice rebound, five to six miles, but we're still holding off some patchy fog between Tomball and also Conroe. Dense fog advisory in effect until noon for the Barrier Island right at the coast. Again, as we go into the afternoon, you're still going to see some reduced visibility, but at least we'll see some improvements, especially considering where you were at this morning. This afternoon here in Houston, we're expecting 78 degrees, a slight shower possible. It's going to be warm, muggy, and breezy, so definitely feeling very spring-like. We do have some changes in the forecast, no surprise there. Uh, we do have this area of low pressure moving out of the Rockies. That's going to eventually drag a cold front through southeast Texas, and that's going to create this big temperature swing for the end of the work week. So ahead of it, we're warm, a lot of clouds, a few spotty showers. The cold front arrives Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, but it kind of stalls out while this upper level disturbance push in from the west, which creates a pretty soggy Thursday. That's going to be the day that you really feel that temperature drop. We're back down to the 50s for the end of the work week, so very winter like, and then we'll throw in those rain showers on top of it. So we're expecting about an inch to maybe two inches of rain for the metro area. Our north county is up to three. This is not a flooding concern by any means, but it's going to be a very soggy Wednesday and especially Thursday, and the rain fall will actually be beneficial. I know it's feeling like we've had a lot of rain, but we're actually still below for this time of year. Uh, upper 70s for today, stray shower possible, but again, our wettest days will be Wednesday and definitely Thursday with that system pushing in from the west. And then behind it, we clear out the skies. Beautiful sunshine, but chilly temperatures. You know, we'll be in the 50s for Friday as we kick off Mardi Gras weekend. A little bit of a rebound this weekend. 60s come back. At least we have dry conditions for Mardi Gras weekend. A lot of fun stuff going on. Plenty of parades. And of course, we have our parade here on Channel 2 on Saturday. And we need dry weather for that. We exactly. Do. <laughs> we do. We do. So it's looking good. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to that, Britta. Well, a new caller is giving your doggy a dirty mouth. That's right. Coming up, what the caller is saying. And uh, it could be disturbing to some people. I'm consumer expert Amy Davis. All this week, we have a series we are calling Am I Doing This Right? Today, we're talking about the way you drive. Coming up, what you do behind the wheel that could be causing major damage to your vehicle. That thing your test needs. In consumer news this midday, your dog's mouth might not be as clean as you think it is. That if uh, he's wearing a cuss collar. That's right, a cuss collar. This is a, prod, a product from MSCHF, known for uh, releasing quirky products. The collar throws out a swear word each time your dog barks. According to the company's website, the collar is a gag gift that does not harm the dog and is not intended for anti-bark training. Delta Airlines says it is going fully carbon neutral on a global basis starting March 1st. Delta committing at least $1 billion over the next decade to reduce environmental impact. That money will focus on clean technological investments for engines and carbon removal. Delta's move coming at a time when many companies are reducing their environmental footprint to combat climate change. A record-breaking number of Americans have saved up $1 million in their retirement accounts. According to Fidelity, a record 441,000 thousand IRA or 401k accounts the firm manages has a balance of one million dollars. They credit record-breaking markets and retirement savings. Still, retirement millionaires are relatively rare. A huge segment of baby, baby boomers are below the much more modest median account of $70,000. Well, from work to school to home, it's almost impossible to get around our sprawling city without a vehicle. We rely on them heavily, so of course you want your car to last as long as possible. We really do. From filling up to the routine maintenance, you might wonder, am I doing this right? This morning, Consumer Expert Amy Davis answers those questions. 
There are five things some of us are doing that could be causing major damage to our vehicle. This was pure neglect. Pure neglect is what Tony Zapoli says caused the engine to seize up on this Dodge Charger. The owner drove it 16,000 miles with no oil change. Just real bad, it'll be kind of sticky. Zapoli owns Advanced Auto Tech on Houston's southwest side. He says failing to take your car in for routine maintenance is one of the biggest mistakes drivers make. It keeps technicians like himself from catching problems before it's too late. We look the whole car over, check tire pressures, check the top of all our fluids, and if there's something that's wearing out that could be dangerous, uh, cause it an accident, we need to point it out to the customer. If you routinely run your car on fumes well after that gas light comes on, you could destroy your fuel pump. It needs to stay submerged in the fuel or it can overheat. Replacing your fuel pump can cost about seven or eight hundred dollars. But that doesn't mean topping off your tank is any better for your car. Forcing the pump even after it stops is not good. You need that airspace expansion room. The fuel on the ground is cool. When it gets in the tank, it heats up and expands. When there's no room for the gas to expand, it can leak through your evaporative system, wasting gas and damaging those parts. And Houston's pitted and pocked roadways are problematic for vehicle suspension and our tires. If you can't avoid them, slow down. Go through them slow. If you don't pop a tire, you'll cause premature wear on bushings and ball joints at best. And lastly, Tony says you need to get your oil changed on the severe weather maintenance schedule. That usually means twice as often as your owner's manual says you should. That's because of Houston's traffic and extreme heat. I'm consumer expert Amy Davis, KPRC Channel 2 News. We have an update now to breaking news that we first told you about at the beginning of this newscast. A shelter in place in Stafford has now been lifted following a gas leak there. Now, this was in the area of Stafford Pride and Constitution Avenue. Live look at the scene. Fire officials have since left, but construction crew is still there right now. We are told that a contractor ruptured a center point gas line at about 8 o'clock this morning. As a precaution, the fire department issued that shelter in place. But that was lifted at about 10.30 this morning. Schools nearby are closed today in observance of President's Day, so students and most of the employees not on campus. The school district plans to reopen tomorrow as scheduled. We are just a few days from the next showdown for the Democratic presidential hopefuls. Now we head to Nevada where early voting is already underway. A look at which candidate is in the lead so far. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. Our society is addicted to sugar. The main thing that you need to eat more of when decreasing sugar ahead. Anywhere. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Midday. Good morning, Tanaya and Sion here with a... Uh Big weather stuff this midday. It's so humid out today. Yeah, it's a change from what we've been experiencing because it's muggy and we're like, it's not summer just yet, no. Eric. No, no, <laughs> but we started the day really warm, unseasonably warm for this time of year. It certainly doesn't feel like February outside, does it? Uh, and it looks less than Chamber of Commerce-like. We've got a lot of haze out there. We had a very foggy morning. The fog is beginning to lift. We still have the fog remaining along the immediate coast, but in town still just kind of icky out there 74 degrees it's probably the best way to describe it south breeze is at 10 that south wind bringing in a lot of gulf moisture so we're going to stick with the humidity during the day today temperatures in the 60s to low to mid 70s we're not going to warm up too much uh, during the course of the afternoon so kind of what you see is what you get uh, the wind coming out of the south anywhere from about 5 to about 15 miles per hour a little stronger at the immediate coast and our visibility right now still a half mile in conroe so we're still dealing with a little bit of fog issues galveston half mile at the immediate Immediate coast, we still have a dense fog advisory that is in effect until 12 o'clock, but most of southeast Texas not facing that. Your forecast going through the afternoon, not ruling out a stray sprinkle or very, very light rain shower, but most of us do stay dry. It's going to be mainly cloudy today. Temperatures into the uh, upper 70s at best this afternoon. We will talk about rain chances going up, temperatures staying warm, and what Mardi Gras weekend down at the island looks like as we do head toward the weekends. All in the 10-day forecast, just minutes away. Stay tuned.
Thank you, Eric. Remember, you can track the forecast anytime you would like. All you have to do is download Frank's free forecast weather app. Just search KPRC in your Apple or Android app store. A look now at some of the morning's other big stories. The criminal trial against chemical plant Arkema and three of its employees over fires at the company's Crosby plant begins this week. The company is accused of air pollution during Hurricane Harvey. Today, the defense and prosecution wrapping up their pre-trial motions. Jury selection starts tomorrow and opening arguments are scheduled for Wednesday. Traffic moving again in the Brookshire area after a crash involving an 18-wheeler. Fog could have been to blame here. You can see visibility was very low this morning. The crash happening on I-10 near FM 359. We're still checking on the conditions of the drivers involved. A group of Americans who were on a cruise ship quarantined to Japan now back here in the U.S. They arrived on a charter flight this morning at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio. These passengers will be quarantined for another two weeks to make sure they do not have the coronavirus. Another flight carrying Americans landed at Travis Air Force Base in California. The two planes carried nearly 400 Americans back to the U.S. The debate field continues to shrink in decision 2020. We are just two days away from the next showdown of Democratic President presidential candidates. Early voting already underway in Nevada. Pete Buttigieg has the early lead after New Hampshire. Health care is huge, but he is siding with union workers who want to keep private plans. Other candidates ganging up on billionaire Michael Bloomberg's record with women and people of color. I am on your show right now, Margaret, answering these tough questions. Where is he? He just keeps running a bunch of ads. Spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to buy an election. Bloomberg later tweeted, quote, I will always be a champion for women in the workplace, end quote. He has until tomorrow to qualify for the debate. And here in Texas, voters heading to the polls beginning tomorrow. Early voting kicking off for several statewide races and legislative seats. Voters can cast ballots at any polling location in the county. Head to our website for a link to find polling locations. Early voting ends February 28th. Election day is March 3rd. Duke University will host former National Security Advisor John Bolton as part of its lecture series today. Bolton was a National Security Advisor to President Trump from 2018 to 2019 and U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations from 2005 to 2006. His talk will focus on current threats to national security. Tonight's event is sold out. Mississippi is seeing historic flood levels as more rain gets set to move in. So much so, the governor has issued a state of emergency as the Pearl River reached nearly 37 feet. The Mississippi National Guard and Highway Patrol are on standby and residents in flood-prone areas have been asked to evacuate. NBC's Blaine Alexander reports. Well, hello to you from Jackson, Mississippi. These are some of the homes in the mandatory evacuation zone, and you can certainly see why. Back there, you have a car that's partially underwater. The water is creeping up to some of these doors here in the area. Now, the river itself is more than half a mile away, yet the water has still made it here, and it continued to rise through the morning. This morning, residents of Jackson, Mississippi, are weathering some of the state's worst flooding in decades. <laughs> The Pearl River is flowing well beyond its banks, turning streets into waterways, creeping into homes, and the river is not done rising. If you have not evacuated yet, we urge you to do so. Boats from the Mississippi Department of Wildlife spent the weekend floating from door to door, urging residents to get out. So scared. And a group searching for pets left behind. We're here to help you. Scooped up one very lucky dog. Come on, baby. With nearly a thousand homes in harm's way, many people scrambled to save what they could, hoping sandbags would salvage the rest. We lived in Houston, so I lived through Harvey. So I don't want to be rescued in the middle of the night with water coming in your house. With days of heavy rain across the South and more to come this week, 10 million people are under flood warnings in parts of Georgia, Louisiana, Kentucky, and the Carolinas. Near the Tennessee River, a landslide swept away two homes, leaving behind nothing but a pile of debris. Back in Mississippi, it could be a week before many can return to their houses. For Barbara and Jerry Beavers, pictures from afar will have to do. And the river is cresting at about 37 and a half feet. That's the third highest level in the state's history. Now, the good news, amazingly, officials say that there have only been about a handful of rescues, meaning that people have been heeding those warnings to get out. In Jackson, Mississippi, I'm Blaine Alexander, NBC News.
Cal 2 investigates looking at thousands of cases of guns stolen from cars, trucks, and SUVs. Weapons thieves then use in more violent crimes. That's right. Channel 2 investigator Robert Arnold breaks down the break in hot spots and what you can do to make yourself less of a target. These guys have shifted from the inner city to neighborhood streets. There's a big change in these car break-ins. Channel 2 investigates analyzed more than 7,000 car break-ins since 2016. Let me be more specific. We looked at those car break-ins where guns were stolen. It's fueling the urban violence uh, in our city, in the city of Houston. Um, is all these guns being stolen out of cars. So, as we were putting these thousands of addresses on a map, what we saw was clearly no part of town is immune to this type of crime. But there are definitely clusters. Anywhere there's a higher concentration of bars, restaurants, or businesses that don't allow guns inside, there are more of these break-ins. Police say they're even now starting to see these break-ins in employee parking lots and outside gun ranges. Here's the bird's eye view of these crimes, pushing closer and hot spots emerge. Like this area inside the loop around I-10, HPD logged more than 1,300 reports of guns stolen from cars here. At west on I-10 in this area, from the Beltway past Highway 6, shows 743 of these crimes. And a little closer to downtown, this area reported 681 guns stolen from cars. When you get a gun that you stole on a car, there's nothing associating that criminal to that gun. So they just feel Feel even more emboldened. Fred Milanowski is the special agent in charge of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives Houston office. He says gun owners are making it too easy for the criminals. That's really putting a, a neon flashing light on your vehicle. He's talking about stickers that signal you are a gun owner. I'll let Sergeant Tracy Hicks explain. He's with the Houston Police Department's Auto Theft Division. Stop putting the NRA stickers on your truck. Stop putting the, the pro hunting, pro, I mean, um, this truck is protected by Smith & Wesson. They They've told us that all they do all night long is go around looking for cars with gun stickers. Hicks and Milanowski say the crooks hang around outside restaurants, bars, or even gyms, knowing people aren't allowed or at least reluctant to take their guns inside. This is also why many gun thefts happen between 2 and 8 p.m. People are now sitting near the gun stores, watching specifically and following those people from the gun stores. The other half of the problem comes from people not locking up their guns in cars, instead just stashing the weapons under a seat, in the glove box, or in a bag. Milanowski said if gun owners would lock up their guns, it would greatly cut down on this crime, especially since most thieves look for the path of least resistance. They're not taking the time to try to cut through chains and locks and everything else. And one more thing, Milanowski says a lot of gun owners don't write down the make, model, and serial number of their guns. Without these identifiers, stolen guns can't be uploaded to state and national crime databases. That means if an officer comes across one and runs a check, they don't get a hit. Therefore, that criminal just goes down the road. If you're going somewhere and you can't bring your gun inside, here's a couple of things you can do. You can get a lock like this one. Runs up through there like that. You then take it and secure it to your seat frame or at least something else that's bolted to the frame of your car. You can also buy a portable gun safe and then have that bolted to your car. Just don't leave your gun unsecured and make the mistake of thinking no one's paying attention. By the way, that map we showed you, if you'd like to get a better look at where these break-ins are happening, just go to click2houston.com. Robert Arnold, KPRC. Channel 2 News. If you have a story for Channel 2 Investigates, you can call the tip line number right there on your screen or email investigates at kprc.com. It is an obstacle even James Bond couldn't overcome. Coming up, why there has been a major change to the launch of the publicity tour overseas for the latest installment of the movie. But first, a live look at Wall Street on this Monday. Now to the change put in place for the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die is the latest film to alter its plans due to the coronavirus. The 25th James Bond film was set to hold an April premiere in Beijing and a publicity tour throughout China, but with that country trying to control the virus, including closing its movie theaters, those plans have been shelved. 
fans have been asking for a while now, and now Justin Bieber finally listening. <laughs> we are talking about this huge Tom Selleck-like mustache that he's been growing on his face. Look at him. The singer posted this video over the weekend showing himself taking an electric razor to it. There it goes. It seems his wife is pretty happy about this decision. He has been rocking that mustache for a while now. So here's a look at what he looks like without oh, it. That's there the babes we know. I know. Such a cute face. No facial hair needed. No, he does not need it. All right, Sonic the Hedgehog speeding to the number one spot at the weekend box office. The film adapted from the Sega video game, opening with $57 million. The movie was set to release months ago, but was postponed to give the Blue Hedgehog a makeover after an initial trailer was ridiculed on social media. Birds of Prey flew into second place, earning $17.1 million, with Margot Robbie reprising her Suicide Squad role as Harley Quinn. And in third place, horror film Fantasy Island earning $12.4 million. It was a weekend of touching tributes for Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and the other people who died in the helicopter crash that happened last month. Fans, players, and even a former president honoring him all of the all-star ceremonies in Chicago. NBC Sarah Harmon reports. This one was for Kobe and Gianna. Touching 24.2 second tribute honoring the Lakers legend and his daughter at the NBA All-Star Weekend in Chicago. For us to be able to honor Kobe Bryant and his legacy, it's a beautiful time. It was the first big meeting of the NBA family since the tragic crash, and number 24 was on everyone's minds. Former uh, President Barack Obama were calling his final conversation with Bryant. I asked him, do you miss basketball? He said, I don't miss it at all. I don't touch basketball, he said, because I am now just as competitive and focused on the second phase. The All-Stars were personal for Kobe. He was the youngest player ever to compete in an All-Star game, named MVP four times. In one of the weekend's most poignant moments, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver announced the All-Star Games MVP award will be permanently renamed to honor the Lakers hero. No one embodied All-Star more than Kobe Bryant. Oh, Grammy winner Jennifer Hudson will perform a musical tribute to Bryant and the eight others who died in January's fatal helicopter crash. The NBA community rallying to remember a legend gone far too soon. Sarah Harmon, NBC News. This year's NBA All-Star Game did not follow the conventional format with four 12-minute quarters with the team that scores the most points winning the game. Instead, each of the first three quarters began with a score of 0-0 and lasted 12 minutes. At the start of the fourth quarter, the game clock was turned off and the final target score was set. The final target score was determined by taking the leading team's total cumulative score through those three quarters and then adding 24 points to that. Once that final target score is set, the teams played until the first team reached that target score. That was Team LeBron beating Team Giannis 157-155. Kawhi Leonard made history last night as the first recipient of the Kobe Bryant All-Star Game MVP. He was on Team LeBron, which again defeated Team Giannis 157-155 with a game-winning free throw from Anthony Davis. The LA Clippers forward finished with 30 points, including eight threes, seven rebounds, and four assists. He said, words can't explain how much this meant to him. America's Got Talent, the champions will crown its winner tonight. Ten acts performed in the finale last week, and tonight the winner will be revealed. One of the judges, Howie Mandel, says several acts could win, but he's hoping his golden buzzer choice does. I said it's the best act I've ever seen, and they still hold that position in my heart. It's the best act. I've never seen anything more dangerous, more uh, passionate, the people that are in it, and more uh, exciting than the unbeatable. America's Got Talent, the champions airing tonight at 7, followed by a new episode of Manifest at 9. There's just so much talent out there. Every year it seems to get better and better. Yeah, and more creative mm -hmm. and weird. And <laughs> there's This year, this season, there's a 13-year-old from Norway, I believe, a uh, singer, who is just unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, she could be a contender. Yes, yes, absolutely. They're all good. Yeah. They're all, they are um, good. Yeah, uh, good day to watch TV today. Yeah, <laughs> stay, inside. stay inside out of this uh, it's grossness. Warm. A lot of people like that, but it's just not that pretty outside. Yeah. And it's going to stay that way as we head through the afternoon. You'll have to find your inner sunshine. Unfortunately, <laughs> we're going to have to wait until we actually see the sun for a while. Take a look outside. This is a look at the beach, and we still have a dense fog advisory at the beach itself for visibility down at or below a half mile. Temperature at the beach right now, 
69 degrees. The dew point is at 67, so the air is almost saturated, which is why we still have the fog out there. Let's take a look at downtown. and You can barely see downtown. This is our camera from San Felipe on top of the San Felipe Plaza building. Nice tall building, but you can barely see downtown. So the visibility is better in town, but it's still not great. Kind of hazy. 75 degrees, dew point 67. Temperatures are warm across the board here in Southeast Texas, and we stay humid here in Southeast Texas because we have a pretty strong onshore wind flow. Anywhere from about 5 to 15 miles per hour. So that breeze will continue. We've got a half mile visibility in Conroe, half mile visibility down here in Galveston. Elsewhere, uh, definitely above a mile, up to about 10 miles in some places. But it is going to be kind of humid today. So you may notice a little bit more frizz in the hair. The hair cast, we'll call it in the moderate category. High pollen. It is tree pollen season. Cedar, oak, and ash are the base culprits. Everything else looks to be in check very much. So if you're sniffling and sneezing, it's because of that tree pollen. Clouds and radar are quiet right here right now. In fact, statewide, we're quiet. We have to go all the way to Missouri and Illinois to see the closest precipitation. Not ruling out a stray sprinkle during the afternoon, just on the heels of the high moisture content we've got. But don't sweat it too much if you don't bring your umbrella with you on your way out the door this afternoon to run errands, what have you. Temperatures stay warm throughout the afternoon into this evening and overnight. Now we stay with a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, so we could have some patchy fog tomorrow morning again like this morning. We also stay warm throughout the day tomorrow, and tomorrow brings us a better chance for a few rain showers because we've got a front that starts to dig into the area. Here's the bigger picture. The front right now is over the Red River Valley. It will eventually sag into southeast Texas tomorrow. And here's what happens. It sags in here, brings us higher rain chances through midweek, and it pretty much stalls Wednesday into Thursday straight overhead. That means the midweek period stays very damp for us. High rain chances, and then the front eventually makes its way off the coast as high pressure settles in from the north. That brings cooler and more clear weather for Thursday into Friday. And, and it will bring us uh, temperatures that are below normal. About 50s, I'm guessing, on Friday, warming up slightly over the weekend into the seasonable 60s uh, with a mix of sun and clouds this weekend. So this weekend, not necessarily a Chamber of Commerce weekend, but certainly better than what we're going to be facing Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the next three days. As far as rainfall goes this week, we're looking at anywhere from about one to maybe three inches of rain, depending upon where you are. Not a washout. We're not looking at flooding rains. This is all just going to be inconvenient stuff. Your power planner for today, we're going to leave our rain chances at best at 20%. I think that may be a little bit aggressive. What we will have is cloud cover. We will have haze in the air. We will maintain temperatures in the 70s today. The big picture, full 10-day forecast. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the wettest days of the next 10 to come. And then we've got our front that finally works its way offshore, bringing us a little bit of sunshine as we head into the second weekend of Mardi Gras down in Galveston. Overall, the weekend doesn't look too bad with temperatures in the 60s after a brief, brief dip into the 50s late this work week. So pretty typical winter forecast for us. Temperatures all over the place, rainfall kind of in and out, mixed bag of weather. All right, winter hanging on, yes. trying to. Thank you. you <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Coming up next, health reporter Haley Hernandez with some advice on how to stop those sugar cravings. I approve this message. Many studies have shown that sugar is one of the most palatable and addictive foods. That's why food manufacturers use excessive amounts of it in foods we don't even consider to be sweet to keep you coming back for more. Health reporter Haley Hernandez has tips on how to reduce sugar cravings. It can be as simple as swapping flavored yogurt for plain yogurt and adding your own sweetener. The trick is getting the most quality nutrients for the sugar that you do eat. But just because it's a simple concept doesn't mean it's easy to execute. Hamburgers aren't even sweet, but did you know the average bun has five grams of sugar? Add condiments like ketchup or barbecue sauce, and this one sandwich might contain your whole day's worth of sugar. You're not eating a donut. You're eating a hamburger, but it may still have a lot of sugar. Dietitian Erin Gussler says you're probably conditioned to eating these foods. You might even be addicted. Mice prefer sugar over addictive drugs in some studies. But we're smarter than mice, and these are really easy ways to reduce the cravings. Start with some swaps. There are natural sugars, so things like our fruits and our vegetables, our starchy veggies like potatoes, sweet potatoes, our grains, and things like that, which I always encourage my patients, if you are going to eat sugar, 
try to choose a more natural version of it. But it's best to get it from Whole Foods. Turn to vanilla, peppermint, honey, and fruit to add to foods and be in control of the kind of sugar you eat. And as you do that and rid the processed foods from your diet, make sure to eat more fats. Nuts and seeds and avocados and things like that. That'll help you stay full. That'll help you stay satisfied. That'll keep those energy levels up. All right, so you want to hear the easiest, simplest thing that works, even though it sounds like it's not going to. Next time you're in the grocery store at work and someone brings in treats, you're inclined to eat that just because it's habit, right? Well, just say no. Psychologists say reconditioning your mind to think no when you see these foods and then not eating them will start to make them seem less satisfying. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez, KPRC Channel 2 News.